B12 deficiency. We're gonna, first of all, we're going to talk about the symptoms so you can identify whether this is something you have. I'm also going to put a note right at the top and say, even if your testing says you don't have a deficiency, if you have the symptoms, you still need to do something about it. You still need to take action. I have never at any point in my life had uh, what is considered like a clinical B12 deficiency, but I've had so many of the symptoms of them. This is called a functional B12 deficiency. So even if your lab tests are showing normal or even high levels of B12, you can still have a functional deficiency, which is where you've got high levels in your blood, but you've got low levels in the tissues in your body that actually need them. So your body is functioning as if it's in a deficiency. And in this case, you actually do need more, more B12. So, even, so I really think that testing is not helpful in, in this case. It really doesn't tell you whether you actually have enough or not. You really have to base this on symptoms. So this is the symptom list. So the biggest one is probably fatigue. And this is because one of the, the primary functions of B12 is to help you make new red blood cells. So this is something that kind of happens when you've had the deficiency for a longer period of time, three months and onwards, because the, the, the life cycle of a red blood cell is about three months. So if you don't have enough B12, you're gonna be creating blood cells that aren't actually very healthy. They don't have much ability to carry as much oxygen, and as a result, you feel fatigue. This can also be one of the causes of this increased heart rate and heart palpitations. Because as you can imagine, if your blood cells aren't very healthy, your heart has to work harder to try to keep your, your body oxygenated. So these are two symptoms that really go hand in hand, and if you have one, you probably have both. You don't necessarily have to. You can have some or none of these symptoms. And it's kind, of, it's kind of tricky to tell you, you really have to play investigator to try and figure this out. These are the two I would say most common. Brain fog, obviously you've got the, if you don't have blood coming to your brain, you're gonna have brain fog. But more importantly than that, and you see this down here in the neuro neurological as well, you use B12 a lot in your nervous system. So I'm, I remember reading, so I was reading about this yesterday, you actually use B12 in the synthesis of myelin. So the myelin sheath, the, the insulator. So imagine, you, imagine if you get an electrical cable, you've got, the plastic bit on the outside, which stops you getting electrocuted, and you've got the, ca the actual cable in the middle that conducts the electricity. Your nervous system is literally like a cable, like this. So you've got this conductive sort of filament in the middle, and then you've got this plasticky coating. And in our body, it's not plasticky, it's like a fatty, waxy coating around the outside. And you need B12 to synthesize this. So if you don't have enough B12, you're not gonna be able to develop your brain, it's gonna affect your eyesight, it's gonna affect anywhere in your nervous system. And you can see that with these symptoms here. So poor focus, short-term memory loss, problems like focusing. So you might think you have like a, a, a dopamine, your, like your dopamine levels feel low, like you don't feel motivated, you don't feel focused. It might actually be a B12 deficiency instead. And then also down here, we've got some more serious. So this is, you're gonna start developing these symptoms if you've had a prolonged B12 deficiency. This, so this means you've probably had a B12 deficiency for a year or longer. So this can look like multiple sclerosis, which is a demyelination. So as, as I just said, the B12 is needed in building the myelin. But also numbling, uh, numbness and tingling. So obviously you would imagine this would start happening in the fingers and then move into the hand and in the toes and then moving into the foot because these are the furthest parts out of your nervous system and this is where the nerve signals are going to be lost first. And as the damage is done, as your body isn't able to replenish the, the myelin and con continue to rebuild your nervous system, you're gonna to start to develop these symptoms. These are kind of la more late stage B12 deficiency symptoms. So now we're gonna talk about the different types of B12 that we can take to provide the body with, with what it's needing to, to replenish these stores of B12 that we're missing. So best form unquestionably is methylcobalamin. So as you can see, the, 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 common, the common thing is these all have cobalamin, right? So it has cobalamin, 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 cobalamin. So cobalamin is actually the B12 part. And the thing that's on the front here, so you've got methyl, hydroxyl, aldenosyl, and cyano. These are the different things that the B12 is bound to. And the reason this is important is this is gonna affect how bioavailable this is for your body. So the unquestionably the most bioavailable is the methylcobalamin because not only is it completely ready to be used, but you actually get a methyl donor with it as well. So your body doesn't even have to methylate it if it so if you have like methylation problems and if, you, if that's you, you probably already know. If you have methylation problems, methylcobalamin can be really helpful. Even if you don't, it's still the best form. It's the most bioavailable form. 
Second, you've got the hydroxycobalamin and the adenosylcobalamin. So if you don't have a methylation problem, you can probably still get away with doing these, but they're still not as good as the methylcobalamin. I would say methylcobalamin is pretty much just the best. And then cyanocobalamin, I actually have a cross here. I would not encourage you to take B12 in this form. So not only is the bioavailability really, really low, but you actually are getting, so you've got cyano here. This is a cyanide molecule, and you probably know cyanide is poisonous. And in this case, it is, it is poisonous. So for your body to use the cobalamin, it's gonna to have to take that cyanide molecule off and to get rid of it in some way. So you're making your body do extra work to get that B12. And if it doesn't have the energy or the resources to be able to do this process, then the cobalamin just stays bound with the cyanide and you don't use it. And it's completely useless. So this is a really poor form. Methylcobalamin, definitely the best. I was also reading as well, and as far as I am aware, Nobody has ever overdosed from methylcobalamin, be it injected in high doses or taking it as oral supplementation. The only times that toxicity occurs is when you're using these artificial forms like cyanocobalamin. It doesn't exist in nature. You never find cyanocobalamin in nature. The form you always find is methylcobalamin and that's why it's the superior supplement. And don't quote me on this. So I'm not saying go and take super high mega doses of, of B12 because I'm still gonna, I'm gonna do this myself and experiment. But as far as I can tell, there is no upper limit of toxicity as far as methylcobalamin is, is uh, concerned. So this doesn't mean just take more and you'll feel fine. You know, it's gonna, it can throw your body out of balance, but nobody's died from it. So there is an optimization process here, especially if you have methylation problems like, like I happen to. So there's, some, there's some, some detail, there's some fine tuning that needs to go into this. But overall, methylcobalamin, definitely the best, the safest, the most effective unquestionably the best form. So down here, we've got the delivery mechanisms. So when we're talking about B12, this is a seriously important part because, so we've got, I think I've written, I haven't written it, but this is important. So the way that we deliver this B12 is really important. When you take B12 as, a, as an oral supplement or when you eat it in food, in order for your body to actually take that B12 from the food that you've eaten or from the supplement, and actually get it into your body, first of all, you have to have a high enough stomach acid level. So your stomach acid needs to be really strong. This stomach acid secretion, so you eat the meat, because you only get B12 in meat, so you eat the meat, you have the strong stomach acid, which is why it's really important that you have strong stomach acid, because you need to liquefy the meat and you need to break all the protein down and stuff. But then the only way you can absorb the B12 is your, your body also secretes a molecule called intrinsic factor. So this intrinsic factor binds with the B12 and then you're able to absorb it. So if you have low stomach acid, you do not produce the acid to stimulate the intrinsic factor to be produced. And if you have other issues like gastritis or any kind of gut problem or uh, pernicious anemia, which is where you have an autoimmune disease where your body is attacking the cells that produce the intrinsic factor, which kind of goes hand in hand with gastritis a lot of the time, even if you're eating all of this B12 and you're taking all these supplements, you will absorb none of it because you don't produce any intrinsic factor. So you can take really high doses and it will do nothing. And this is why the delivery mechanism is really important, especially if, so I've got these special caveats here. We've got the pernicious anemia, if you've got gastritis, so they're, they're the reasons that I covered there. But also if you have SIBO or CIFO, if you've got a, a gut dysbiosis occurring, especially in the upper part of the small intestine, when you, when you take these this, this B12, even if you do, you, so you don't have these problems, you produce stomach acid enough, you produce the intrinsic factor. If you've got organisms inhabiting the upper digestive system, they're gonna be able to take these nutrients before you have the opportunity to absorb them. And it's not really their fault because SIBO is always an adaptive response. It's there because it's doing a job, but it can lead to nutritional deficiencies. So in this case, taking an oral supplement, in, in any of these cases, taking an oral supplement is a definite no because it's not helping you at all. So the other options that we have here are we have injections. So these are actually really easy to do. I'm even thinking about doing a video showing you how I do this. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you leave me a comment and let me know. You can, you can buy this online and this is definitely the best way to do it because it is very pure, it's very cost effective. It literally comes from a lab. I've got a website that I really like, a supplier that I really like, and I'm happy to share them with you if you're interested. Make sure you leave me a comment and I'll make sure I add a, comment somewhere, I'll pin a post or I'll, I'll add something in the description. So let me know if you're interested in that. Injections, by far the best way to go. There's just, there's no arguing with it, like it's in your body. 
it's absorbed. And this form, the, the, the supplier that, that I get it from, is methylcobalamin. So you're taking the most bioavailable form and you're putting it directly in your body. There's no way you can't absorb it. There's no way it's not bioavailable. It's exactly the form that your body needs. So without question, injection is the best option. Methylcobalamin is definitely the safest. You can also do injections with hydroxy and adenosylcobalamin and again, quite safe, um, quite effective. I would not do injections with cyanocobalamin. I wouldn't even, I, like, don't, just don't even, don't, just don't even mess with it. Just don't eat it. Don't eat it, don't take it as a supplement. Just, if you see cyanocobalamin, just throw it away. It's, it's worthless. These two, they're okay. Methylcobalamin, definitely your best option. But one other option we have here is sublinguals. So if you have pernicious anemia, gastri or gastritis or SIBO or SIFO, I would definitely go with the injection because there's no argument it's going into your body. Sublinguals, so these are a type of B12 that you are, you're able to absorb through, through like under your, like in your mouth. So you can absorb it through your gums, under your tongue, through this mucosa in your mouth, and also through the mucosa in the stomach without the need of the intrinsic factor. So this can be a really good option. I haven't experimented with it. I don't know how effective it is. I've heard that it's quite effective and I've heard that people with pernicious anemia that don't respond well to supplemental forms, obviously because they're not producing the intrinsic factor, do benefit from taking it as a sublingual because it's prepared in a different way. But this is such an important thing and like these symptoms are serious. Personally, I just wouldn't even mess with it. Just go with the injection. It's so easy to do. You can do it at home. You can do it very safely. You do it into your fat, so it's really safe, it's really effective. That's definitely my favorite way of doing it. So again, if you're interested in seeing a video of me showing you how to do that and providing you with the resources so you can do that yourself at home, let me know, I'd be happy to share with you. So B12 deficiency, um, a, massively, a massively underrated thing. Like you hear all about like vitamin D and vitamin C and all of those things being important. And I feel like B12 deficiency only really gets mentioned in sort of like vegan or vegetarian communities, but you don't have to be on a vegan or vegetarian diet to have these problems if you've got pernicious anemia, gastritis, SIBO or SIFO. Because even though you're eating a lot of these things in your diet, you just can't get the nutrient from your digestive system into your body. So if, you're, if you have these symptoms, definitely look into it. And if you have some of these symptoms and you know you've got one of these things as well, this is probably like, probably needs to go to the top of your priorities list. This is something you need to do some research on and, and take some action because this can change your life very fast. So a lot of these things can resolve very quickly, like the poor focus, the memory loss, the short term, the short term memory loss, like these things can be fixed very quick. The things like the fatigue and the, um, the, the thing, the, the heart palpitations, so the, the symptoms that are developing as a consequence of the poor quality of red blood cells that you're producing, this takes about, three months, 90 days to see an improvement or to see a noticeable improvement. Because even if you put enough B12 in your body and you start making healthy red blood cells, most of the ones that you have, they're still from when you were sick or when you had the deficiency. So it's gonna take 90 days for you to have a full set of new healthy red blood cells again. So some of these symptoms can improve quickly, but like the fatigue, the uh, heart rate and increased heart rate and the palpitations may take a little bit longer. And it, it will probably be like, as time goes along, the amount or the intensity of the symptom decreases. So you'll have more energy, your fatigue is coming down, and your heart rate will also come down and your palpitations will reduce, either in frequency or intensity, probably both. So that is everything from me today. I'm just gonna check to see if we have any questions. So if you have any questions, make sure you let me know because I love to answer them. So I don't think we have any questions today. Oh, we do, Dom, nice to see you, Dom. Hope you're doing well. So Don says, what if you don't tolerate methyl B12, will hydroxy do? That's very interesting. So if you're not tolerating methylated B12, then there's probably some methylation work that we need to look at. That's something that we could talk about in our next session, if you would like. So in this case, you'd definitely be one looking at taking a, doing like a 23andMe or some kind of um, genetic sequencing test and then put that through some software to give you a, a methylation profile panel. So you can use geneticgenie.org, it's a free one, I really like that, they have a really nice format, and they also provide you some nice little descriptions about what your single nucleotide polymorphisms actually mean. So we probably have to look through that and see where in your methylation process taking methylated B12 is 
either overloading certain pathways or blocking up other pathways and finding a way around it because this is the form that you're supposed to take you know this is the form that's in nature so if you're having a problem with it there's probably some maybe a little deeper bit of digging that needs to be done but i would say like if this is a problem then and, and you think you have a deficiency, then short term, like using these two is, is probably a pretty good option. The hydroxycobalamin and the adenosylcobalamin, these are also pretty good options. I would say probably the adenosylcobalamin is slightly better than the hydroxycobalamin, but overall methylcobalamin is definitely the best. So, and, and just don't even, t like if you see cyanocobalamin on one of your supplements, just throw it away. <laughs> it's rubbish, just get rid of it. Okay, any more questions? Let me know. Uh, Dom says, interested in the injections. Okay, I'll, I'll send you those, Dom. I'll, I'll uh, get you those details. So that's everything for today. No more questions. Um, I hope it's been really helpful. And if you do have questions after this is finished, like if you're watching this as a recording, please let me know. I try to answer every single question and I'm pretty damn good at it. So if you have any questions, let me know. It's been lovely seeing you. And I hope this has been really helpful. I hope it changes your life. So see you soon. Ciao.